Hi everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts Designs. I've got a quick um, polymer clay tutorial today. I'm gonna make, it's really hard to tell what the design is on this one, but bracelet bars, polymer clay, um, some stamping, some mica powder, and some resin. Um, UV resin, sorry. Okay, I have made quite a few. <laughs> Just love these Halloween ones. They may be too sparkly that you can't see them, but this one is just a crackle snap. This one I did three times because depending on where you look, there's different... This one is a skull and a crown. There's lots of different... This one is part of the jack-o'-lantern, so that's why I had to do <laughs> this one. The full jack-o'-lantern still has the skull. Sorry. And then I had to do this one. It's a cat. A black cat. So cute. Anyway. Valentine. This one was supposed to be a Skinner blend. But it didn't work. Um, the temperature right now in Texas fluctuates way too much. 20s in the morning to upper 50s in the evening, sometimes upper 70s. This one is actually a flower pattern. Again, you cannot tell. This one is um, a script text. Oh, I love this one. I don't have to tell you what the pattern is on that one. Uh, it's pretty. This one is um, bubbles. This one is the ginkgo leaves. This one is actually seahorses. This one is raindrops. Love it. My powder is so pretty. This one is swirls, and it is a smaller oval, which I can't decide on which size I like better. This one is a fern leaf. Oh, love that. Well, you can't even see it from the other side. Um, mm -hmm. The polymer clay is actually colored. Sorry. I don't know where my mind went for a minute, but... This one is actually... Undersea, like looking through the kelp. Okay, it runs this way. There's seashells, there's. Well, I can't tell everything that's in there, but. And then these two. Oh, they're so pretty.
Okay. Oh, and then I did this one for fun. I should have done I should have done a bracelet bar with this stand. Don't know what I was thinking, but there's still time. And then I did a smaller heart. Although I did um, punch the holes as if it was going to be a bracelet bar. But it could be a pendant hanging with a dangle or something. The possibilities are endless. Okay. Uh-huh. So, I, I just threw this together with um, beads that I already had on my table. I would have picked larger beads to go along with this, but it is what it is. This is called a rosary um, chain link. Uh, not that it was a rosary, that's just what the chain link is called. Then I wire wrapped a couple of matching beads for a little dangle. And then I did the same thing off the toggle. Super cute. I don't know how far we are into this video, and I haven't even started. This is actually. Um, it's from one of those multi-pack, I think it was 24 color, it's Primo. Why can't you just spit that out a little sooner then? this rolled out on the thickest setting on my pasta machine it's on a glazed glass tile it would be on my glass mat but I'm trying to save y'all from the darn ring light all right this is a texture I believe it's just called a texture mat from cool tools i'll try to leave the link below if y'all have never heard of cool tools they have some of the most awesome um texture stamps and they come in they come in everything from it's like a it's like maybe a two by four inch wide piece of course the the um mm -hmm. the proportions of the stamp would be scaled down for that size but the point is they come in <laughs> several different sizes from like less than seven dollars i think to this one was like Mm, 16 or something now that's been years ago so with uh you know with stuff it's probably a little higher all right so i'm, I'm gonna try to pick i'm gonna try to pick a good which may be pointless but Okay, I realize this is a no-no, not something you do to roll on the back side of a stamp with the polymer clay underneath that will push the polymer clay along as you roll and it will stretch out the stamped image. Okay, but what I'm going to do, or try to do... Okay, 
was I, I held that stamp down while rolling on it. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Oh, that made a really good impression. <gasps> really good. I'm very impressed with that. Good technique. Hold on to the stamp while you roll on it. How hard is that? Okay, now. I'm gonna add a little hippie crafter. Okay, so what do we got? We got a, a silver base, but I want it to have kind of Egyptian kind of flair. So this is the yellow ochre. this one. Oh yeah, the Carolina Blue. I love that color. And let's go with... No, 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 no. Not the orange yellow. Um... I was gonna say the orange red, but... It's just not hitting me, is it? Okay, so far we'll just start with the, what we've got. How about that? Okay. The yellow ochre, which is a very, very yellow. <laughs> but when you put it on, it um, has a golden hue. Don't mean to be so quiet. Okay, I don't know what portion of this we're going to use yet, but... I'm sorry about the bruise. All I did was hit the back of my hand on the edge of my desk. That's all it takes when you're old. When you're, when you're, <laughs> okay, not old. My husband would never allow me to say that. So you're not old. But I feel old sometimes. No, I really, I don't. Okay. Something like that. Although, I want to go back with the yellow, huh? The powder still open. Now you can blow on it. <sighs> hey, now. Do we want... Do we want it to run across our wrist like that? I believe we do. Or like that, which you'd actually get 
um, more rows <laughs> of the uh, of the pattern, but this way I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just gonna go with my instincts and go this way. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna excuse my head for a second. Okay, and because I can't find <gasps> my stainless steel soaps, I know they're like less than three feet from me. Ah, I'm going to use, these are the bottoms of aluminum cans, okay? As long as you're not worried about how smooth the inside will turn out, <clears throat> they're a fantastic alternative when you're just starting out. I've literally had these for years, years, I tell you, years, okay, and just because I just noticed, I just noticed how, how uh, little blue there is. Just gonna add the tiniest bit around the outside. Okay, yeah, that, that's, that's the look I'm going for. It's just a tiny amount, but it's definitely apparent. Okay, so now I'm going to transfer. Oh my goodness. All because these were in the oven. <laughs> okay. So, we'll start to kind of coax it just a little bit. Make sure it's kind of centered. Just so the curve is even. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that. Mm -hmm. Okay. It just helps the bracelet to fit a wrist a little better. Like I said before, I might actually prefer the smaller size, but I have very small wrists, so um, for the majority, this would probably work better, okay? Alright, 275, and I'm only going to do this eh, 30, 45 minutes, something like that. I, my oven is on a timer you know and I just I don't even look how long it sets this one I did heat it just a bit with the heat gun because I wanted the curve um, yeah to be all around and not just from end to end if that makes any sense at all so I just heat the top with it 
with the heat gun a little bit. Okay, now when I put it in the oven, I'll make sure there's a little bit of uh, polyfill underneath just to support it so it doesn't slump. Which is not that serious a problem when uh, when your piece is this light. Okay. Alright, 275, 30, 45 minutes. Okay. <clears throat> Out of the oven now. This one is actually... <laughs> it's actually a lion from a uh, crest. A French crest. It's really pretty, but you cannot easily tell what it is. So, um, my plan was, like on this one, it's a musical scale, obviously, is to either put, um, a couple of little, um, shrinky dink, uh, <laughs> musical sheets thank you <laughs> uh, or just a couple of little black um, <laughs> musical notes I've got some tiny little um, uh -huh, resin molds okay and then this one which actually didn't um, it didn't bake quite right. This bottom edge didn't get smoothed down. But it's still really pretty. Would make a really nice bracelet uh, focal. So, this is just the UV resin mixed with a little bit of gold glitter and a little bit of this is the pixie dust um, from Christy Friesen It's just a silver holographic, but it's a really fine um, glitter mix. And I have no idea. It doesn't have any kind of label on it. No idea where this came from. I'm assuming... Well, it's going to make a big assumption, but I'm assuming it came from Walmart same thing I just chose it because it's a super fine glitter and yes I have other super fine glitters but that was the easiest one to get to okay so they have baked on their little beer can bottoms Super cute. I'm going to stir this up a little bit. Um, this brush is the brush that I only use for resin. Sorry about my voice cracking so bad. But I only use this brush for resin, and I don't ever wash it out. You can wrap it with foil, and it will stay nice and moist isn't the word, but moist. <laughs> Oh, 
just when I thought I was done. See, one of the things you have to be careful of is like right there, it's just a little spot that didn't get touched by the resin. And when you look at it from an angle, you can tell. So I'm going to put this under my UV light. And it's going to go, the, one and a half minutes is the maximum amount of time on my particular lamp. So it's going to go four times. And while that one is under the lamp. <clears throat> I'll do this one. And this one you have to really be uh, conscious of whether the resin fills up those little details. Okay. Then you know it's been hit by the resin. Now, if you don't like that um, look where it fills up every cavity, show you a little trick in a minute. Okay. Then you can just And that will clean out some of the resin from the detail. You don't really want to remove it all. Because that is what gives it that glossy, protected look. Okay. And again, I'm going to do that one. For four times at one and a half minutes or so. Six minutes. Okay. Here they are. Along with all the others I've done. It's like once I get on a a kick, I've gotta I've gotta keep going till I exhaust it. I know that there are others out there of us as well okay so last thing i'm going to show you um the norcal way pen vise i'll show you how to re-drill a hole that you've resined over okay first of all you want to drill from the resin side not from the other side. I know it's contrary to everything, every basic instinct you have, but, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, see, on this one, I did not even drill. I did not even put a hole ahead of time, so. Again, a good distance away from the edge and at first I'm just going to rock it back and forth I know you think that's not doing anything but really and truly it's starting your hole okay perfect little hole does not blow out the resin whereas if you went from the back side it definitely would okay once again
Beautiful. Get some of the dust off. Okay. There we go. Oh. That hippie crafter mica is so pretty. So pretty. This one was with that uh, burnt umber over the silver gray, I think it's called. Huh? And then just a little bit of the um, yellow ochre. It's so pretty. On this green, uh huh, green blue. I don't know what color it is. Of that primo. Uh, maybe forest? Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not completely sure. But, <clears throat> there you go. Your own stamps. Your own mica powder. The possibilities are literally endless. Um, if you want to glaze with something else, glaze with a varathane, glaze with something similar to that, that would be fine. Alright, there you go. Fun, fun. Oh, I had this on actually, <laughs> not to go back off. Okay. Super sweet. Thank y'all so much for watching. I'll leave the hippie hippie crafter mica powder links below. <laughs> I'll get it right eventually. Um, I did use the NorCal Way pen vise. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for watching. I've got an Amazon shop listed below I get a little kickback from the rest of my social media links will be listed below bye for now